our desires change. What you want at 18 is not what you want at 28 or 48. Definitely not. You really do see a difference. And when you're in a long-term relationship, you're having different sex than if you're single and dating around and playing the field. You're like our friend Hal over there who's got four women to choose from. <laughs>
and facility of the tissue that becomes a really big challenge for penetrative sex. Doesn't mean we can't do it, we just need some help. Lube is your friend, very important. If you're not familiar with lube yet, you should get so. <laughs> um, one of these issues is also a line that didn't hurt too much. Um, some of these other challenges are related to just you know getting there before we even talk about uh, lubrication and needing some help. Just getting that desire. It's not about your partner. It's really about what's going on inside of you. So we see a lot of older women talk about that. Um, and of course, the lack of partner, which we already talked about for women. The lack of partner is the biggest predictor for whether or not they're going to have sex. <laughs> On the, the dude side, it's pretty sexy. Four women to every one man. Now think about that from a woman's point of view. You don't have a lot to choose from. And he's probably <laughs> sleeping with your best friend. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. <laughs> exactly. So you really have a, have a challenge. So that's really, so one of the things when I talk about sexuality is as um, people who work with older adults, because mostly I work in the nonprofit sector, work with social workers, I work with case managers, um, I work with directors of senior centers and other people like that who have senior clients that come to them with these concerns. Um, and, and what I talk to them about is helping seniors to redefine sexuality. Because the press tells us that sex is all about penetrative sex. But for those of us in a real relationship, we know there's other things that go on in the bedroom besides that. Absolutely. So helping us to expand our definition beyond that tradition. Now let's go switch to the flip side. We're finally having sex. We got over all of those barriers that I just highlighted. We have met someone, perhaps online, maybe through Tom Camper, who knows. Um, <laughs> Very likely. And now we've hit that magic number, date three or five, <laughs> whichever you choose. <laughs> and yes, I wonder who's lying, because it's either three or five. I don't know. Um, so, what happens next? Well, for many seniors, you guys, they know what they're doing in bed. I'm not going to challenge that idea. However, the other side of the work that I do is about talking about uh, safe sex. And that is something that not all seniors are comfortable with. So if we talk about the youngest seniors, I'm not even going to get into the issue of the older seniors. That's a completely different ball of wax. But the younger seniors, many of them are from the free love generation. They really, they, they get that. They get birth control. But now they're past menopause. Once you're past menopause, for those of you that flunked by a one one you really can't get pregnant. It's a big problem. So you don't have to worry about birth control. So you're not thinking about protecting yourself from anything. For the oldest seniors, they really never even worried about any of that. Um, the reason why they didn't engage in sexuality or sex before marriage was that fear of being pregnant of getting pregnant because that was a huge stigma. So now that we've we established we can't get pregnant, we don't need to worry about this. I am finally at that point in my life where I don't have to worry about getting pregnant, and yet 20% of all new HIV infections in 2010 were in the over 50 crowd. 20%! One in five. <laughs> that is a big number. So anyone who looks at you and says, I don't need to worry about it because I'm an older adult, is lying, in denial. We do need to worry about it. And it's very important. So we have to talk, anytime we're going to talk about sexuality, anytime we're going to talk about dating, romance, whatever, we have to talk about protection and that safe sex conversation. So I'm going to give you guys all homework. <laughs> How many of you know someone, perhaps a mother or grandmother, who is over 60, who is single, and I'm sure you won't know if they're dating or not. They're like the new teenagers. They're not going to tell you anything. <laughs> I know the mother. I know how 
this works. I want to challenge you to have that conversation with them. It will be really hard. I have done it. I have talked to my mother. Um, I've talked to my aunts, my uncles, and basically anyone else who moves <laughs> about this. Because it is that important. The other side of this is that people who are living with HIV are living longer. They, we have a lot of new treatments out there. We have a lot of great um, resources for people. They're living longer, but they're not necessarily living healthier. A lot more increased chronic conditions uh, amongst older adults with HIV. Um, a lot of health challenges for those folks. Uh, but they're out there. <coughs> We're looking at over 40% of the HIV positive folks here in New York City are over the age of 50. If we look at that, go back 10 years and say over 40, we're looking at well over 70%, 78%, I think, at less count. Um, so really, HIV is no longer the sole proprietary area of the young people. In fact, it is more relevant to the older adults, both in those who are living with it and those who really need to learn how to protect themselves from it. And if we talk about other STDs, my expert area is really around HIV, but we talk a lot about other STDs because they're very, very much important, very relevant. You don't want to get HIV, but you also don't want to have chlamydia. Hey, um, it's really essential that we're talking about everything. If we look at boomers, another really big challenge area is hepatitis. Hep C is huge amongst the boomers, and nobody's really talking about it. There have been a couple of articles here and there, but it's just not getting the sexy traction that some of these other issues are. But it is equally as important. It is a critical health crisis. So I really want to challenge us to empower seniors, much like we empower young people, to speak up and to say, sure, I may only have a couple of guys to choose from, but if one of you says you're not going to wear a condom, I'm going to throw you to the wind. Bye-bye. It's really, it's that important. And we do a lot of empowerment. We do a lot of education with young women especially, uh, but with young people in general. And we don't do that with older women. We also need to talk to older men because think of the awkward conversation that it is when a woman says to an older guy, I need you to wear a condom, and he's already experiencing some erectile issues. And that added barrier for him will make it near impossible to get an erection or keep an erection. Awkward conversation. Well, honey, I'd love to protect you, but I won't be able to succeed if we do it that way. Really hard. Or not so hard, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but it's an important conversation that really needs to happen. As you can see, I like to use humor when I talk about this topic. It's really comfortable for me. I get a few laughs out of it. They get a few laughs out of it. Kind of breaks the tension. Um, and I just find that it introduces an issue that many people are uncomfortable with, uh, especially older adults, because it is a challenge. It's very difficult to talk about sexuality. And when you haven't been socialized to talk about it, my generation, yeah, we pretty much talk about it. We'll talk about it with anybody, anyhow. You want to ask? I'll answer any question if I really care. Um, but my mother, who's almost 70, oy, that was like pulling teeth. She didn't even have to talk with me when I was little. It was more like, you got any questions? No. OK, good. Don't ask any. And I was like, So now, having that conversation with her, um, after being widowed and, and experiencing that massive loss, you know, feeling that, how can I move on from this? But the reality is that she's probably going to live a good 20 more years, 30 more years. And will she want to seek companionship at some point? Whether it includes sexuality or not. Whether it includes penetrative sex or some other type of expression. It doesn't matter. She needs to have that information. Because at some point she may need it. And if I can help save her life and give that information to someone else, that's important. And that's what I really challenge us to do. I know it's, it's 
a little bit of a different conversation than, than what perhaps you're used to. Um, not exactly necessarily a business point of view, but it is essential to everything that we do. And I read a, a magazine, and this is where I'll kind of close it out. I uh, read a magazine, it was a 50 plus life, just lifestyle, you know, hip, cool, cutting edge kind of magazine. And it was their February, I don't know, 2009 special on love, sex, and dating. And that's what they called it. I read that damn thing cover to cover. And there was not a single men mention of HIV, STDs. There wasn't even advertisement for condoms. I mean, come on. Not even an advertisement that is a missed opportunity. And that is something that if you are thinking about business opportunities around sex, around love, around seniors, and engaging seniors, even if we take sex out of the equation and just talk about alleviating social isolation, which is a critical need, we have to have these conversations. And they have to be part of that. You can't leave it out entirely. Thank you so much. I hope